Hey, Warriors, it's me, Jess. I am so excited that you guys are hanging out with me today. I have a beautiful guest, and we are going to really just talk about her book and kind of give you guys some tips along on your journey. So just hang out and just, you know, grab a pen and some paper because, you know, I feel like we've been dropping some good stuff for you guys. So just stay tuned. Queen Majida is a poet, recording artist, and author born and raised on the island of Jamaica. Her writings cover her spiritual beliefs. Her poems are included in several anthologies. She has toured the United States, gave poetry recitals, workshops, and lectures on college campuses, libraries, and cafes, as well as various venues on her native land. Majida has just released her brand new album of poetry. It's set to music titled Wedding Invitation. She enjoys posting lyric videos from her album to YouTube. Majida has also worked as a newspaper reporter in New York. She's an English as a second language instructor to adults and a public and private secondary level English language arts teacher. She also teaches English language arts online. Majida is available for speaking engagements, poetry, workshops, and recitals, either virtually or in person. Her album is available on CD or as a digital download at https queenmajida.com. Hello. 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 How are Hello. you? It's so great to be here. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so excited to have you on here. Can you please, please just share a little bit more um, about yourself with everyone that's watching today, if you don't mind? So, I perform under the name Queen Regina because I started out as a recording artist, actually. I'm from the island of Jamaica. And the poets that record their poems to music, they all take on a stage name. So I assume the name Queen Majida. Majida means noble or glorious. I chose it after visiting the African Caribbean Institute and it's West Africa. And like I said, it means noble or glorious. When I started recording my poems, I was not yet a follower of Christ. I was not yet a Christian. I became one, actually, I would say about the time the album released. And uh, I just, I was torn. I didn't know what to do because do I continue with this? It's like, what, what's happening? But I, I would say I, I promoted the album a little bit. And I, at a time, I was a closet Christian, if I could call it that. So I didn't tell people because I just didn't know what the reaction would be, especially people in the industry. I just didn't know how to tell them. So at first I kept it to myself. But years later I moved to the US and I had a personal experience with God, which led me to say, I have to write this song. You know, he was doing so many things for me that I said, this is gonna be my coming out, my coming out book, my coming out as a Christian book. So I related uh, the things that he did in my life because I would say I saw direct interventions from God when I decided to just trust him, trust him fully. And I had only to rely on and he did not let me down. And so that's how I ended up writing my mini memoir. <laughs> That's good. That is so good. I want to do a quick um, fun fact for everybody. So a quick fun fact, guys. I literally met a Queen Majita here, okay, online. She's been so beautiful ever since I met her. But I read her book. It was so, I don't know. I couldn't put it down. I just read it, like, all the way through. <laughs> just read wow. it all the way through. Wow. But, guys, she was very um, impactful on my writing journey. She was the one That's who reached so out. You know, she helped me and she recommended that I join the seven day challenge. You know, she's like, I don't know who these people are, but this may be good for you. And through yeah. her sharing that, through her obedience, 
um, I was able to finish my manuscript in seven days through that writing challenge that she shared with me. So I do want to make you guys let you guys know that she's awesome and she really, you know, is just so sweet and her heart is just so good. But um, I did want to add that quick fun fact, guys, because <laughs> she has been a dear, dear, dear sister in Christ to me um, ever since. But yeah, so anyway, I wanted to share that because I thought that was so good. And I think it's so awesome how the Lord works, you know, because um, so many of us, even myself included, you know, I was raised in the church, but my mom was, uh, I grew, she brought me up Catholic and my father was Church of God in Christ. So I had conflict from both sides, you know, yeah. my dad's side is like, you know, you, we praying for you, you need to leave that Catholic church. And then my mom said like, hey, you know, you over there with them, they speak in that devil's tongue. So <laughs> it, was, it was a confliction, you know? So for me, you know, I, I would pray, but I was confused, you know? I wasn't necessarily like a closet Christian, per se, but I was confused if I even should believe because I didn't have a sound doctrine in my mind at that time. Yeah. Um, I didn't know him for myself. So along that journey, I was able to, you know, connect with others that led me, you know, to Christ, to know him for myself, to have yeah. my own relationship, if you will. Yeah. Right. So yeah. just as your book was like your first coming out, you know, hey, yeah. I'm a Christian, you yeah. know, me holding my first women's prayer meeting back in 2011 was yeah. my moment. It was that, listen, you know yeah. what, I am caught by God and yeah. I just have to be obedient. And if that means getting his daughters together for one time, yeah. I just have to do it, you know, and yeah. then it just grew. And so moving to the whole uh, online thing for me was like, okay, now everybody's going to know that, <laughs> that I'm a Christian. Are you ready for this? And so I, I, I just appreciate you for sharing that because I've spoken to so many people who can relate, you know, yeah. on so many uh, levels. And so um, that segues right into your book, actually, because you mentioned this in your book and your journey and the struggles um, that you face um, with your, uh, even with your recording and just coming over for your schooling, like, it's just so much that you talked about that yeah. I deeply, you know, can just really resonate the power of God and how he moved on your life. So yes. if you don't mind just kind of sharing, you know, just take us on a journey, you know, you shared how, you know, you was a closet Christian and then you came out with this book. It's kind of like a coming out thing, but let's go to the next phase. Like, how was the writing experience for you because i know it had to be rough um writing all of this down and knowing knowing the big picture like this is going to be out for the world to see how was those emotions you know oh okay so why i wrote the book because when when these things were happening in my life friends would say you have to write a book you have to write a book which is so unusual and when i decided to write the book tears would come to my eyes when i like read the chapter especially when i was editing it I would cry, not because, not because I was sad, but like, whoa, look what God took me through. Mm. You know, I would say I was sheltered. I was sheltered, so I was not exposed to like being in need. I was used to the comfort of home, quite into my adulthood actually, and quite um, being used to be provided for by my parents, even though I, I was an adult, because when I started my college journey, I started as, a, mm. as an adult. And um, just to see what I went through and what God took me through, you know, I remember one day because, of course, every semester I did not have tuition. And I remember just kneeling down over the bathtub one day I was, as I was cleaning it. And I started winning. I was crying so loud that I'm sure because I was in an apartment, I'm sure the neighbors heard me. But I'm like, God, I can't believe you're not answering me. What am I supposed to do? And I cried. And God answered, like, in no time. I would probably say it was probably the next day. He did so many things so many times that just writing it would bring back those emotions and just being overwhelmed of, you know, how much he loves me. And, you know, it's not just me. It's all of us. Because I remember being in church and hearing somebody has given testimony and at the time I said, well, you're not doing anything for me, but at least you're doing something for somebody. So I said, no, you're a good God. <laughs> but you know what? 
that very weekend he did something for me too. So he, he, he's just so loving and merciful and willing to help us even more. I heard the pastor say more than we're willing to ask, he's more than willing to provide. Mm, yes, 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 that is good. Especially, I feel like your faith was just, I feel like God was really building your faith through that writing process after hearing this, you know, how you were feeling and, you know, even the tears of joy and just gratitude and thanksgiving of what he's done for you in your life, yes. you know, and so many times when, you know, we complain or we, you know, just feel like life is just so hard and so stressful. Yes. But when yes. we reflect on those things, when we reflect, mm -hmm. you know, on yes. God, but you were so good at this moment, but you got me through this thing. And, you yes. know, and even um, I had this conversation with my son yesterday. I yes. was like, even on your toughest day, think back on your worst day. I was like, did God get you through it? He's yes. like, you're right. I said, are you still here? He's like, yes. Said, when you think about that, yeah. every time you are faced with something that you feel is just, this is it, this is the yes. end, like, I can't go any further. Think about those moments because mm -hmm. they're so needed, you know? Yes. I feel like it's one thing to hear, you know, to read in the Bible about how God just really showed himself in people's lives. Yes. And it's another thing it's even powerful to know somebody that you know how God has, you know, impacted their lives. But when you go through it and you reflect on what yes. he's done for you, yes. you know, and we don't deserve it. Ooh, yes. that, is, that is so good. You know, yes. Yes. I just really love it. And I, I really love even the title, uh, Mountain Mover. What gave you, what was the, what, yeah, what gave you the, um, the push or, the feeling to just go with this title. Well, where did that come from? Okay, Mountain Mover. Yes, you know, all from writing the book, I just couldn't come up with a title. But <laughs> I've always had this song in my head where Sherry Stephen sings, My Mountain Mover, My Waymaker, you know, my no hope now. <laughs> that has always been in my mind. Also, I read a book that influenced me called Praying with Power Moving Mountain. Ooh. And also, he also, Kenneth Kozak is his name, he also documents his journey through college. And so that served as an inspiration for me. And when I decided to submit the book to the publisher, I still didn't have a title, but I was putting out the form online and I had to provide a title. I'm like, God, what do I title this? And Mountain Mover just came to me. And it was the wow. title. Wow. Yes, yeah, so. that is so good. I think that, that the moment. Yes, right there in that moment. I think that sometimes we we think too hard. Like God could just like, okay, God, what is it? And He just give you the answer right then and there. Like yeah. that is so amazing, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> and you didn't even have to cry about it or take days to fast about it. He just gave it to you like that. <laughs> I had no name up to that moment when I was about it. I'm like, wow, that is so fitting because he certainly didn't move another mountains. You know, in that story, the story that he gave me, and I would say in the process, he was holding my character, building my faith, and even yeah. reading the book. And you know, at times we can be like Elijah. We can be yeah. like Elijah. Remember how Elijah yeah. prayed to be God? And he proved that God was God to the yes. people and even though God rained down fire and consumed the sacrifice and showed the people who was the true God if I just still went through a moment or a process where instead of focusing on what the mighty God just did he was focusing on a threat from Jezebel yeah. and I find that at times even though God did move so much for me I would focus even even though I said okay now I got Something that caused me to focus. And a friend said to me, you know, you need to go back and read your book. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, you know, I'm happy that you shared that because I was um I was thinking the other day, uh, you know how we make these posts on Facebook yes. and it says like on this day, however like last year, so many years ago. Yes. And when I pull it up some days, I made a post. And it's like, who knew that I would need this in the future? You know, yeah. something I may have posted like 10 years ago or eight yeah. years ago yeah. to know that this Jessica right now at this time mm -hmm. needs yeah. 
what I posted from back then. And so yes. I think that's so good that your friend said, you need to read your book. <laughs> Because even though, you know, we're writing, thinking like at this moment, like I'm so full of faith or I'm trying to encourage somebody like, yeah. says you encouraging yourself too. You need, you need to be the oh, same way. story. <laughs> yes. I love it. That is so good, man. This is, it's always so fun to see you and hang out. Um, <laughs> I love this. And you know, that is why it's so important to write things down so it might be an encouragement to other authors and would be authors. It is so important to document things so we can always go back to them. Even on social media, as you just mentioned, that's a form of documentation also. It is so important for in time of need, you know, God is doing just back then. He's still doing it today and he's willing to do it for all of us. As long as we put our trust, he said, you just need a tiny, tiny amount of faith. As small as a mustard seed, that's all you need. Yeah. And the little mountains. That's <laughs> right. Know. Yeah. That's right. That is so right. Mm -hmm. I um I want to ask you if you don't mind sharing. Let's kind of dive over into the um the author writer side of you right now. Um, yes. Because uh, I know that for a lot of people, even myself, when yeah. I first started, you know, I was overthinking and um mm -hmm. just kind of trying to just put everything in. Um, without just kind of focusing on one story at a time and you are a huge help with trying to help me like okay you need an outline you need to focus you know yes. can you give some tips like to somebody just really starting out um on yes. their journey um mm -hmm. writing a memoir or how whatever um what tips can you give to them that you wish you would have had um yourself um in your writing process Okay, well, for me, what I wish I did was to write things down as they happen. Because I remember someone said to me, write it down now because you're going to find that you forget some minor details, you know. So if you're writing about your own experience, start writing them down as they happen. And then what I found was easy for me, I was when I, did, when I started, I was like, where should I start? Where should I start? And then... I remember with our I researched a memoir, you always start at the most dramatic point. So if you're writing about your own experience, start with a dramatic point, something that happens to pull the reader in. And then what will make it easy from there is to have a chapter outline. So once you can tell what each chapter will be about, that will guide you as to where your book is gonna go. That's and you will be able to see how it's going to end once you outline those. Once you list, so first list those chapters and then start typing like a paragraph or two what you want to be in each chapter. And then that will be the start of, of, of how your book will go, a guideline. That's good. That's good. I think that was my biggest thing um, for me was I would write an outline, but that outline changed drastically all the time. Like I just kept changing my outline. And I think that's very key to not, not just write an outline for those that are like Jessica, quit changing it. You write that outline, you stick to what you have. And if you yes. get something else, if you want to write something else, then you write something else separately. But you stick yes. to that outline. And when you're exactly. finished, then exactly. you go to God, right? right. Thank God, yes. is this what you want like how do you want me to piece this together did you want me to add those to this book like ask him seek him and he would definitely give you the answers because you know i did write my outline that outline i probably have like six or seven outlines i'm like how do you keep changing your outlines this yeah. right so yeah. not just write it but stick to it stick to stick it, to it. Yeah. i think that is so good and just having that accountability too you know that outline is kind of like your accountability partner exactly uh, right because it keeps you focused it keeps you yeah. you know on task because yeah. we can get off task like well ooh, i'm not remembering something else we're yeah. now you know thinking about whatever yeah. and you cannot put all that in the book because right now the way my manuscript is set up my whole life practically is in my book and y'all can't handle all of that right now so we just go <laughs> Yeah, I can't handle all of that right now. So here we are. But I think that was so good. And um, I really appreciate it, you know, you for that. And even when I got into the challenge, they were really big on sticking to your outline and things like that. And um, just writing things down as you hear the Holy Spirit. And 
I did that, you know, I, as I heard, as I had my memories, you know, brought back to me. And um, at some point, I just had to pause and just like some points, I think I had to just repent and just pray, you know, um, because it would be too much for me. So I had to do a little healing and deliverance, if you will. I might write a book about my writing journey, okay? But <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> it was rough, but yeah, I think those are really good tools, especially for those that are new to writing, those that, you know, are just trying to just focus, you know, and that's my prayer. My prayer is that whoever is watching this video, you know, that if God has appointed you and anointed you to be a writer, to be a scribe, I pray that your focus is is straight and arrow that you're not looking to the left or to the right. I pray that God places the right people around you. And also, you know, my prayer is that you really, you know, kind of try to connect with somebody that God puts the right people in your life to help you on this writing journey, because it can be rough to go at it um, alone, um, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're in a place where your faith may be a little shaky, if you will, you know what I'm saying? I, I really think it's good to have an accountability partner that will pray for you, that will hold you up, you know, and, and keep you accountable. So I feel like I'm I'm, I'm talking a lot. So here we go. <laughs> but yes. No, it's okay. I want to add something to that. As you mentioned prayer, it's also important, of course. Yeah. Ask God to help you. What do you want me to write in this book? Because like you said, you're going to write another book about your writing journey. Chances are you're gonna write more than one book. So God, what do you want me to put in this book? You know, yeah. and if you find that you write something else on the side, can I put it in on this chapter or maybe for another book? And as a friend said to me, he was the one who was gonna he originally he was gonna pass it on to a publisher that he knows. And he said to me one day, he said, you know what, write the book God wants you to write. Mm. Because, of course, there's more to my story, but I felt for this particular book, this is all I'm going to put in that particular book. And perhaps one day I write up the rest of the story. <laughs> and that's good. And that's good. And I think for me, it was like, so far, it was like, okay, I have all of these stories. I have yes. so much content. I can, mm -hmm. if I wanted to sit and just focus, I can break all 16 chapters into 16 different books and make it a series. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. There's just yeah. so much in it. And yeah. I think that's the part, like that part, like sit down and say, God, what is it that you want me to say? You know, yeah. but I know a lot of times, you know, when I speak to some of my friends or family members or people that I just meet, I kind of observe a lot of us really like, look, I really don't know, you know, I don't understand or I can't really hear from God or, you know, they may need that little extra help to really pull it out of them mm -hmm. to know that, you know, God speaks to us in so many different ways. It's not necessarily yes. an audible voice, you know, yes. it's a knowing or, you know, it could be a vision or a dream or it can, you know, it's just through nature. Like God speaks yes. to us so many ways. Yeah, I think we just bottle ourselves like, well, I can't hear his voice. And it's like, but you can in so many ways. His voice is talking oh, to us. Yeah. Um, and I, I I do know that for for me, for my experience with people that, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of I'm so good at helping somebody else get through. Like we're going to push through, you know, what yes. are you feeling? What are you thinking? But then when it came yeah. to me, it was like I just I was getting stuck. And so. I had to just stop and realize that, okay, I'm not stuck. This is the enemy really attacking me today. And I had yeah. to learn how to really fight in the spirit just to finish writing what I did right, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, those things do happen. You do have attacks and there are times you have to just stand up and just say, yeah. no, this is not about to happen. This is not about exactly. to go this way. I'm yeah. going to get this done. I'm going to see this through. And I just yeah. had to get to a point where you know, I even had to watch my words on how I even spoke because I will always say like, yes, I know how to finish, but I just don't know how to finish that. Like I can start, but I can't finish it. And that would happen in my life. I, I can help anybody start anything like, OK, okay. we're going to push you through. We're going to start yeah. it. But trying to finish, there was a problem. 
and I had to say, you know what? No, I am a finisher. I am a, you know, I can start things with excellence and I can see it all the way through. I am a finisher. Yeah. I do have a finisher spirit. Like I had to decree a thing over myself to yeah. see these things yeah. through. And so yeah. I feel like somebody needs to hear that <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. You do, you know, and God will always tell me, I am the author. I am the finisher of this book. And I had to trust God, sure. like, um, through this process sure. and I'm still yeah. doing it. Um, I'm still editing actually, as we speak this week, I just got another chapter. I got to <laughs> finish editing, but, um, I just want to, you know, I just want to thank you because you, you know, you share so much and you're just so open and I just love your book and your testimony because it's so powerful. And, um, because God can do anything, anything, no matter how small or big or in between. Exactly. exactly. He's a mountain mover, you know? <laughs> he is, yeah. He literally is. Literally, yes, yes. Yeah. You know, all those different mountains in our lives, no matter where yeah. we come to that place, like he can move it, it can be yeah. done. But we also know that he's given us the power and authority to move some things too out the way. So I just thank him yes. for that, that his spirit lives yeah. in us so yeah. um my thing my next question is is there something that you're working on now that you want to share with anybody okay and before i answer that question i know that it came to mind when okay. you're writing right if you're talking to one person mm. and bear in mind what do you want that one person to take away when they're finished reading the book what's the message that you have to want that one person Okay, and so back to your question, what am I working on now? Yeah. <laughs> I just released I just released this speed of my poetry, which is eventually going to go towards the book of poetry. But during the lockdown, during the lockdown, I was heavily impressed to write a poem around the wedding theme, the wedding, the wedding feast that God has in, has invited us to. You know that call to all of humanity? I was so yeah. impressed to write it. And so I had the opportunity to, to record it. And uh, I am I am working on promoting promoting that CD now. I I released it and so far the 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 feedback has been favorable. Thank God. Um, I can say I can say I think it's so important at this time because the invitation for all of us is more right now so urgent that we respond to the call because soon we won't have an opportunity to respond. You know, we have to respond before it's too late. And so I felt that urgency. I felt like I had to share that message with to so strengthen those who have not really accepted that invitation and to also share the invitation with others who don't know. So that's my project right now. And, you know, something I learned over the weekend is how people are having visions. You know, the Messiah, whatever name they might call him. In the Muslim language, they call him Isa. And they, they're having... If you start Issa dreams, they're having Issa dreams where he's telling them, follow me. You know, one lady said she prayed for healing and he appeared to her and he just, he told her, I'm going to heal you, but you must follow me. So, so many people are receiving the invitation, but we, it is for us. He sent us to go ahead and send the invitation to everyone, but there are parts of the world where people yes. are not. Where missionaries are not able to go, where we can't reach, you know, and yes. it's he's revealing himself to not just the Muslims, the Jews. So many people are coming to to the Messiah at this time, and I just feel that is an urgent call right now. <laughs> mm, you are so. I mean, I'm telling you, you are all on it. I heard um a share uh, on an Instagram post one day um how I was just in the shower I was just praying and praying and God gave me this like word but yeah. in the midst of it I heard this like I heard this call I heard mm -hmm. this noise and I'm like wow it's like an alarm I'm like you hear this alarm yeah. nobody heard this alarm and I'm like what? I mean it's so it was so loud like it was like it was outside my house I looked out the window and I'm yeah. like is this somebody outside 
And God told me, you know, no, it's a clarion call. He said, I am calling my sons and my daughters and those that can hear me, those that know my voice. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like it was really heavy. And I think that was like in August, like around August when I heard this call. Yes. Yes. And I've been feeling this need to just kind of just like walk, walk in who I have called you to walk in and walk in it boldly. Speak yes. when I tell you to speak. Move yes. when I tell you to move. Yes. And, and, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, God, you really want me to say this to somebody? Or, you know, you really want yes. me to say this out loud? <laughs> that is, right? But I have to do it. And yes. it's been like, uh, just even like a, like a, I don't know, not a heaviness, but like this feeling that like, I have to really start doing more teaching and just kind of, you know, giving these words as they come. And I think for so long, I'll be, if I can be transparent with everybody, um, this actually, I kind of speak about some of this in my book, but, um, you know, like I said, I grew up, you know, with the Catholic faith and also with, you know, Church of God in Christ, but I was baptized you know, first Holy Communion, my Eucharist, you know, and my confirmations, all these things, my, even my marriage, all these things were done in a Catholic church. Okay. So there were just a lot of things in me that I did not agree with, or I did not mm-hmm. understand. Yeah. And one thing was, I didn't understand the prophetic, and I didn't understand um, that I was worthy enough to talk to Jesus. This just is me being honest. I felt that I had to speak to someone like a priest or a saint um, to speak to Jesus on my behalf. And Uh so when I got to a place where God says, I called you, it was like, you called me a woman? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, "Mm, you sure? Like, is this really God? So I was, there was a lot of things that I dealt with, but I remember as a small child, I would see things. Like I would have dreams, I would have visions and I would hear things and I would see colors on people and I didn't understand these things and mm-hmm. when I would express it to certain people you know they would tell me oh you know you're psychic or you know mm-hmm. you just you know maybe you got psychic abilities and I'm like mm-hmm. mm, I don't know like that would scare me you know but I would see I would see things that people couldn't see around me and oh. so I say that to say as I got older and God began to really use me you know, I would see things I could see and smell like there's a smell of death. Like there are things that you can just see and smell that oh. the natural, the natural person wouldn't pay no mind to, but it's there and it's around. And I didn't under quite understand it. And I feel mm-hmm. that the more I accept who I am, the more that I really embrace, okay, God, I am the way that you've created me, the more comfortable i think i feel sharing certain things you know but it took me a long time so when i finally opened up and i began to minister and i began to tell people about my visions and dreams of what i'm seeing yeah you know i got comfortable in that space in those women meetings at home and when god was like okay you're gonna go online now because i had no intentions like i literally was like i'm gonna make a video explaining to people okay this is a mission that I have but this is what my vision was but this is what God's vision like I never intended on really making warrior women in Christ what it is right now online my intentions okay. was literally to start a lifestyle blog and kind of talk about my faith every now and again but mainly you know my family and food and doing like baking videos and yeah. things like that or like DIY projects and mm-hmm. I bought the Warrior Women of Christ domain so I can own it. So when that time came, I felt like when I was much older, I can really push for it with the ministry. And God was uh-huh. like, no. So I started getting subscribers like that, right? And nothing uh-huh. would work for my other website. Absolutely nothing. Uh-huh. And I'm sharing this, right? I'm sharing this because it's kind of like, we'll have a plan. We'll have a vision. And then- yes. But if God gives you that call, when you hear that yes. call, yes. things are just going to happen and line up. So exactly. all of this kind of goes hand in hand. So now it's like, okay, you started Warrior Women in Christ and you're sharing people's testimonies. You're encouraging people. You're encouraging my daughters to write. You're encouraging mm-hmm. them to grow in their business. But I need you yes. to start sharing more of who you are. I need you to start sharing your testimony. I need you to minister my yes. words. Yes. I need you to teach my daughters. And I need you to share your dreams, to share your vision. 
And yeah. that's scary for me because I was comfortable in the confinements of that home with that small yeah. group. Right. But now you want me to open up to a mm -hmm. world of people around the world. <laughs> right? So that that is like hearing that call means you have to even do that. Like you have to share your faith on whatever level you're on. You know, yeah. I don't come off like where well, you need to do this or you need to do that. But yeah. hey, this is a sense of urgency I'm feeling. So if you're yeah. feeling this, then you can understand. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, I feel like right now is I can't look back. Like I can't look back. I That's have to so overcome true. that fear. I have to yes. overcome what people may think of me or what they may call me or yeah. what they may assume that I am because yeah. ultimately I have to answer to someone bigger than all of us, you yeah. know, when that time comes. And so yeah. hearing that call, having yeah. that urgency, you know, I commend you for your obedience and for speaking out and for doing it. And, you know, because so many of us, myself included, have been disobedient, have been afraid, have been fearful, you know, or just downright, you know, just, I'm just going to be honest, like, I don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, pick somebody else and uh, God is like no i've called you i've yeah. called you and if you won't do it there will be somebody else but i still I have the answer, right? yeah. somebody else is going to do it so i have to do what i was called to do and we yes. pray this prayer and we're yes. like god what is my purpose what am i supposed yeah. to do and yeah. then he tells us and we're like oh no no not that we wanted to be yeah. convenient <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I mean what I have done. <laughs> right. And so that even includes our writings. God yeah. told me you're gonna write this story. And I'm like, nah, I'm yeah. gonna write it the way I wanna write it. Uh -huh. well, you're gonna tell it, and you're gonna tell it the way I said. I don't yeah. care how anybody else may think or feel. My yeah. daughters need to be free. My daughters yes. need to know that yeah. if I can get you through this, if I can forgive you, if I can heal you. The it, same thing can be done for them, you know? And I'm like, but Lord, are you sure you want me to say this? Like, ah, uh. but it doesn't matter. You have to just go through it. <laughs> you got to get through it and you have to be honest and stand on your truth. So this is for my journey. I feel that, you know, that call is bigger than just, you know, moving in faith and walking in faith. You have to know that you know that you know and stand on your truth and stand on God's word yeah, and yeah. know that, no matter, you know, the humans or the people around you, God is with you. You know, your brothers and sisters in Christ are with you. You know, um, you have angels around you. Like you have so much, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, with you. And this is a note for me. This is one of those, oh, Jess, you need to go back and watch that recording moment. You know? <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean, and I remember even calling you during the summer because I'm like, because I felt so compelled. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be the Holy Spirit. I, you, you know what? You know the feeling because yes, it's it's you feel compelled. You have to do it, and it's like no, yes. I, I remember calling you. I was calling people. Do you think God be full What do you mean, God? I just wanted to get it in a clear answer. <laughs> yeah, and you got it. You sure got it. I remember that. I remember. I was like, oh, so simple. And it was so simple. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> and that whole people, that was, that was like, yes. like, wow, it's so simple as you said. And yeah. I remember seeing a friend posted something on Instagram and she said, hmm. When God called, it wasn't a conference call. So, <laughs> like, why are you asking the other right. Your call. Yeah, he called you. No, he said, well, yeah, that's personally, that's, that's, that's personally his call, you know? He yes. called you. So, the call. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hey, it was not. That's a good one. I like that one. God called you. It was not a conference call, honey. Okay. That's 100% accurate. I tell you, I love it. So I just really, I'm have, enjoying this conversation, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this conversation. I hope you don't think I'm rambling too much, guys. But just uh -huh. know when we talking, we just talking. Okay. <laughs> yes, I really appreciate this. So 
I feel that God is just so good. And I really personally love your book. I love the journey. Excuse me. I love the testimony that you put out. I love, you know, what you're working on right now. You know, your page, you, you have so many things with your poems and artwork and such things like that which I'm still looking for a really nice frame because I don't want to just put any old kind of frame. So I'm excited about that. Oh, yes, I'm still looking for a frame. But she just has so much stuff, guys. And she's just so encouraging. And um, I just really appreciate all your social media handles. And um, I don't know, is there anything that you kind of want to leave everybody with and just, you know, kind of let us know, you know, what you really want somebody to take away from today and just tell them how they can follow you um and where can they purchase your book um from and your other items as well okay all right okay encouragement for others you know there's no time like the present so just ask now whatever you have to do don't delay because really tomorrow is not promised to us so just do what you're called to do do it prayerfully God will guide you. Ask him, you know, what steps should I take? How do I do this? And he will guide you. And you know what? The Red Sea didn't part until Moses stretched his hand. Even when the Israelites got to the Jordan River, it was when they stepped in the Jordan. So you have to make a start and then God will do the rest. Don't say you're waiting for it to be something. He tells you to do it. Just do it and then he'll make the path straight. He'll make the path plain for you once you start. So the first thing is to just get moving. So that's my tip and stay close to God. Stay close to God. And very soon, very soon, the promise of his coming. We don't care when we go home. So let us stay close to him. Let us remain faithful because that faith that we have in him, that hope that we look forward to will very soon come true. And you can follow me on all social media platforms at Queen Majida. So I'm at Queen Majida. And Majida is M-A-J-E-E-D-A. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so blessed. It's always an honor, you know, to speak with you, to meet with you. And I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. And thank you all who are watching and who are uh, following this movement. And if yeah. you too are a woman Christian author and would love to be featured here with Jess, please um, don't um, <clears throat> hesitate to send me an email at warriorwomenic at gmail.com. Also, all of my information to follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and such are all linked below low and everything is pretty much warrior women i see um and i pray that you were blessed by today and also i'm a mom so if you hear my kids crying or yelling in the background y'all pray for me pray for me <laughs> and if you guys enjoyed today's video pre please feel free to subscribe like and share and if you have any questions um please uh write them below and we will try to uh answer them um, in a timely manner and just kind of help you along your author journey and if there's something that you would like to know and would like for me to answer outside of this also you know just dm me or comment as well and we'll try to answer those questions so be blessed and thank you for watching thanks for hanging out bye bye thanks for having me